let's talk about the difference between proxy pattern, adapter pattern, and facade pattern. Oftentimes, one of them are explained in terms of the others, and also oftentimes, the lines simply blur in between them. So the other day, I had a discussion with someone about proxy pattern, and I sort of loosely used the terms facade and adapter in that conversation, essentially referring to the same concept. So traditionally, I haven't really been separating these concepts in discussions, but uh, this piqued my interest. I did a quick search and I found this article. I've linked the article below, by the way, and I just figured it had a really good explanation of the differences between these. And before we dig any further, I would like to say that, of course, the way I, I see it, regardless of whether you're using the word adapter or facade or proxy, I think when people look at your code, they will understand what you mean. And when you say one of these terms, they will understand what you mean, essentially. But the way I read this article that I keep mentioning, they seem to say that a benefit you gain of using the correct term is that people will know which scenario, scenario you are referring to. So in other words, there are detailed differences, there are nuances between these three patterns and the cases in, in which you may want to use them. So using the correct word would help a person who understands these nuances to understand what scenario you are specifically talking about and in some sense then to understand what problem you are solving. Okay, last point before we dig into these patterns. If you are not familiar with any of these patterns, let me just quickly say that essentially what all of these do is that you have a place where you want to call a method on an object, but instead of calling the method on the, no on the object, you call a method on some other object who delegates to that first mentioned object. Essentially, that's sort of the core of both fa facade and proxy and adapter. But the nuance lie in why you want to do this and how you do this. But with that out of the way, let's get down to what these actually mean. So again, we have proxy, adapter and facade. So, proxy pattern changes the implementation but does not change the interface. Adapter pattern changes the interface, but does not change the implementation. Facade pattern essentially does what the adapter pattern does, but has some more nuances to it. The nuance being that facades usually grow large and a facade indicate that there's something wrong with or that there's a problem with the object being facaded. We'll dig in more in detail in a few moments, but let's just recap. So, so proxy changes the implementation without changing the interface. This means that you can replace a proxy with the original object and vice versa, because the interface is the same. The name of the methods are the same. So if you have some kind of list class and on this list you have the methods push and pop, and if we then create a proxy for this list, then the interface needs to be the same. In other words, the proxy need to always also be able to respond to push and pop, but it may do different things. So for example, the, of, course the, of course the usual implementation of a pop is that you get the element back and that the last item in the list or array or whatever is popped off the list or the stack or whatever it is. But so say that we, for some reason, our proxy for some reason doesn't actually want this behavior. The, our proxy wants the, the item that you've popped to stay inside of the list. So in this case, we could create a proxy that, that has the method pop, but whenever you call the method pop, it doesn't just call pop on uh, the, the proxy object. It calls pop, but then it also pushes back the object that it popped. So in other words, we, we manage to get the uh, item back, but we also keep the item in uh, the list. Right? So, in other words, this is changing the implementation. We have the same interface, so we can, we can exchange uh, proxy lists for normal lists and use them interchangeably in the application, but the implementation has changed because the proxy object does something else. 
Moving on to adapters. Adapters change the interface, but does not change the implementation. So if you think about, I, I think the best analogy is probably to think about power adapters, right? When you travel to a new country and you need a new power adapter, it's not that you don't want electricity. I mean, you want electricity. You just want to be able to plug it with a different interface, right? You want to be able to plug it using a different connector, right? And the, the same thing is true here in code. So you want to call, you want to call push and pop, say, but in your application, you may have in many places assumed that you had an object that responded to, uh, say, get and set. Disregarding the fact that uh, the, the interface I chose was highly confusing and get set seems sort of implies that <laughs> there is only one item that you can get and set and not a list. But disregarding that, I think you get the point still. The adapter in this case does not change the behavior of the adapted object, but it simply delegates to the adapted object with, uh, by, by changing the message we send to that object to whatever is appropriate for that object. But it takes, it receives messages uh, using the, the syntax that, using a different interface, using the interface that we've used elsewhere in the application. So again, the adapted, um, the adapted list has get sent, while the list has push and pop. So the adapted list cannot, in the application, be exchanged for actual lists because they are different interfaces, right? You can't just take away an adapted list and instead input a, uh, an actual list because they have different interfaces. However, uh, you are now able to use uh, the list in your application even though you've written your application using a different using a different API or using a different interface ie the get set interface all right lastly facades are essentially the same thing as adapters in other words they they too change the interface but does not change the implementation but the article argues that facades usually grow very large over time and that the sort of distinction or the nuance lies in the fact that that facades facade over, right? The thing that they are facading over, that they are a facade over, that that thing kind of has some issues or, or is not necessarily superbly designed, right? Or should not be considered ready to use, right? For some reason or good to use for some reason. So in other words, the adapter pattern doesn't necessarily, to other, uh, according to this article, as, as far as I understand it, doesn't necessarily communicate to other developers that you are unadvised to use the, the thing that the adapter is adapting, right? Adapting over. If the adapter is adapting over a, a, a list, that doesn't necessarily insuade to other developers that you should not use the list or the array or whatever we were talking about by itself. In contrast to the facade, which insuates to developers that one should not use the thing that the facade is a facade over by itself. It may, for example, be legacy and is intended to sort of be deprecated, right? Honestly, I wouldn't be super harsh with these words. I would, in a real world scenario, allow myself to create an adapter that slightly changes behavior, right? I mean, this depends on how strict you want to want to be, but I mean, if you have an adapter that calls, or how, how strictly you want to interpret this, if you have an adapter that calls two methods on the adapted object, then it could be argued that the adapter is not just adapting, it's actually also changing behavior. So if you would want to be really strict, you would have, you would probably have to do something like that you would have an adapter first and then you would have a proxy that changes the behavior but yeah uh, perhaps this is one of these one of these scenarios where i would sort of weigh the cost benefits right like it's if it's if it's trivial and people can see that you are simply calling two methods then yeah fair enough i mean i would call it an adapter and call it the end of the day and keep moving on uh, but if it's something that might be long-lived and it's a very large class or something like this, I really think there might actually be a lot of value in separating the proxy concept or the proxying from the adapting, right? Or the proxying from the facading, right? 
to actually make it very clear to people what you are doing and where the program is moving towards. Well, I've got to stop hanging out at the parking lot now. So, as usual, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions or uh, angry outrages, right, just hit them down in the comments. And if you have ideas about what you would want me to talk about in future videos, please shoot me a message. That would be fantastic. And of course, make sure that you do not miss the next episode. So, subscribe for more code. Moving forward, becoming better. Yeah, you know, literally. Yeah.